In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this drawing of a row of houses in one point perspective. I'm going to walk you through this step by step. If you are not too experienced with drawing in perspective, then don't be too concerned because I'll explain everything that you need to know. And if you do what I do, then you'll have a nice drawing at the end of it. So let's begin by establishing the horizon line, which is our eye level. This is going to be a horizontal line across the middle of our page. Next, we need to place a vanishing point, And in this example, it's going to be directly in the center. All of these houses that we are drawing are set at the same level, so I'm going to draw another horizontal line below this and then start to draw out three rectangles. One directly in the centre and two either side. This is how I have drawn my rectangles. Next, I'm going to draw another horizontal line above them, and this will be the top of the roofs, but before we draw them in, let's use this vanishing point that we have to draw in the sides of the houses that are at the sides. To do this, I take a line from the vanishing point to the top and bottom inside corners of the rectangles. Once you have done this, then we need to determine the depth of these houses. I'm going to eyeball this in and go with something that feels right. This line on the left is about halfway between that rectangle and the one in the centre. The line for the right rectangle is closer to that as that house isn't going to go as far back as the other. I want to make each of these houses look different so I'm going to alter the design of them as I draw. Now I'm going to work on drawing these roofs which is likely the most challenging part of this drawing but do your best to follow what I do here. I'm going to begin by adding some dormer windows on these pitched roofs. Then for the house on the left I make a smaller section and triangle as this house is going to have a smaller one. Next I'm going to finish these off by adding another triangle around them so that it looks like this. So hopefully you are following along and you are not finding this too challenging. So now let's complete these roofs and I'm going to start by taking a line from the top of the triangle that we made for the dormers and bring it to the vanishing point. Here we are creating the side of them and so I need to find the depth. Again I'll eyeball this in and I'm going to draw that in like this on an angle because we need to consider the sloping roof. Now that I have drawn that in I can section part of this house off on the side and then I find the halfway point of that remaining section. I then extend that halfway line to the top of the roof line and create another triangle. I don't bring that back edge right to that top point though, instead I set it a little lower because I add another line further outwards which creates an overhang for this roof. I then draw around this to create the edges of the roof and I finish by finding the angle for the other side of the roof. When it comes to finding the angle of your line for the sloping roof, it can help to extend your lines upwards like I do here. This helps you make a better judgement because all of these lines would angle inwards and head to one point which in this example exists directly above the vanishing point of the page. That house in the centre is easy to deal with because we don't see the sides of that but now we also need to finish the roof for the house on the right. I do the same as I did previously, I find the halfway point on the side and extend a line to the line above, then I draw in a triangle and I create an overhang for the roof. I also need to draw in the side of that dormer to finish this off. So now we have what is looking more like a row of houses and as I said earlier I want each of these to have their own design so I'm going to add some sections to these which will make them look more interesting. Let's start with this house on the right. Here I use the vanishing point to create the side of a new section on the front. I then draw another rectangle and I also start to draw in the roof which is also going to slope inwards to the house. The house in the centre is going to have a section that overhangs the door, so I draw that in like so before adding the outline for a door and also a garage. I'm not going to do much more with the house on the left except draw a small step up to the door which I then outline along with the garage. And because I have done that for these two then I may as well draw in the door and the garage for the house on the right. I will also add a front edge to all of the roofs, outline the area for the brickwork on the houses as well as bring a section of that first house forward and sit it just below the horizon line. 
So this is what I have up to now and there's something missing. We need some windows of course so I'm going to draw these in. You can do the same as I do here but also feel free to make your own windows and draw them in where you want. Here I also draw some of the surrounding environment, keeping it simple and using the vanishing point to draw the driveways, the street and also some fences in the background. If you have gotten to this stage then congratulations because you are now done with all of the construction. If you are happy with what you have then be sure to more permanently outline your drawing before moving on to rendering. And of course I will show you how to do that in a moment but first I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes to discover on topics including illustration, design, photography, video freelancing and more. I have recently taken the Productivity Masterclass Create a Custom System That Works by Thomas Frank. I'm making the effort to stop slowly relying on just scribbling everything down in a notepad and so this class is helping me develop a productivity system that works for me. Skillshare is an ideal sponsor for this video because I know there's a lot of you who watch my content that are passionate about learning and improving your creative skills. And there's definitely no shortage of classes on the subject of drawing. If you decide to join Skillshare you'll get access to thousands of classes and it is also incredibly affordable with an annual subscription less than $10 a month. There is also a limited time offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership so try it out for free, see what you think of it and I guarantee you'll find many classes that appeal to your interests. Now it's time to jump into rendering this drawing. We are going to continue using the same mechanical pencil with some 2B lead. If you don't have anything like this then it doesn't matter at all, you can still proceed using any pencil and achieve similar results. So let's move forward and I'm going to begin by adding some light shading to the exterior of these houses. I do this twice, the first time I angle my pencil strokes in one direction and then I angle them in the opposite direction the second time, similar to cross hatching. Also as you do this try to always apply the same amount of pressure as you want a consistent shade throughout. Next I'm going to start to apply more pressure to get a darker result and I'm shading in the sections of brickwork on the houses. I create a subtle texture by firstly drawing in some horizontal lines and then shading over this. When you work on the sides of the houses, remember that your lines will need to be directed towards that vanishing point. Now it's time to render the roofs and fortunately these are easier to render than they were to construct. I start by creating a bold outline around the roof, applying even more pressure this time because we want these roofs to be the darkest part of the house. I then start drawing some horizontal lines followed by some lines in the opposite direction that follow the angle of the roof. Once I shade over this we have a texture which resembles a tiled roof. I repeat the same process when it comes to the other houses. I also do the same for the additional features that have been added on some of these houses. Now it's time to add some detail to the windows and doors. How you want these to appear really comes down to your own preferences but feel free to do them the same as I do here. I always start by creating a window frame and then dividing that area to establish the panels for the windows. I then shade in the windows and add another line across them to represent another feature for the window frame. I do this for each of the windows, some big and some small. I don't do anything fancy for the doors either, I add some window panels and some smaller details. And then for the garage doors, I don't do any shading, I just create a pattern that consists of vertical lines. So now these houses are almost finished and I'm going to render some of this environment. Again, I am keeping this as simple as possible and easy to follow since it is a beginner tutorial. I'm going to shade in the grass areas and render the fences that can be seen in the background behind the houses. I also add a darker shade and some detail to the cab, along with an even darker shade for the driveways and the street. Again, if you work over these with a few layers and take your time, then you'll end up with a better result. To finalise this drawing, I also add some shadows where the roof overhangs and also on the sides of the houses. 
I also extend this street out and make some slight adjustments until I have a drawing that I am happy with. And that finally concludes this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did then please leave a like, if you'd like to see more then be sure to subscribe with the notifications on, and if you'd like to take your studies further then do consider checking out the Patreon page where I create some exclusive content, including tutorials, study documents and more. But with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.